guys, it's me again. You know what time it is? Another list, because those get me the most views. So I was thinking to myself that I'm literally just a guy starting out. I'm not the angry video game nerd, Jean Tron, or Cat Icarus for that matter. I'm just someone who is literally just starting making videos more seriously about nine months ago. So I thought to myself, what would be really a good topic for someone who is just starting out? And I was thinking about the most logical thing I can think about. Intros. More specifically, video game intros. And you know what? I'm gonna make a list about them! Yeah! Let's set up a few gun rules before we start this. 1. No starting menu music. Those don't count. 2. Only one per franchise. Some of them will just dominate if I don't put that restriction. And 3. You have to realize that there are so many good ones that I'm gonna exclude some. As a matter of fact, you're watching some of my honorable mentions right now. In fact, there's so many good themes that I'm not just gonna make it a top 10, so this time I'm gonna make it a top 20! So here we go! Top 20 cinematic intros in games! Number 20 For those of you who follow my stuff, and I hope you do, I talked about this intro in my games of decades past of March. One of the things that bothered me in the HD version of Rayman 3 is the lack of the song Matter by Groove Armada. This was the point that I found out how drastically different Rayman 3 is gonna be from 2. I mean, look at it, this is Rayman 2. And this is Rayman 3. 2, 3, 1. Raving Rabbits. This song is literally what carries this intro for me, but the ending is also well done. I don't really have much to say about it, and it's just an awesome song I just keep listening to over and over. Maybe because of legal issues, they had to exclude it from the HD version, but either way, it deserves a spot on my list. Number 19 it's amazing how the Persona series is so popular, and not because it's a JRPG, but more to the fact it's actually a spin-off of the main Shin Megami Tensei series. True fact. Persona 4's opening has a catchy music and an interesting way of introducing his characters with silhouettes that makes it feel more like an iPod commercial. However, I'm gonna choose Persona 4 Golden, or how I'd like to call it, the only game worth buying for your Vita. There are a bunch of elements that I prefer here, and for one, it's the animation. Seeing all the characters dance is pretty cool, even if I have no idea what Yusuke is roaming through a trash can. The colors definitely pop out of the screen, and you can tell someone really enjoyed using After Effects. But last, but definitely not least, is the opening song itself. For a song called Shadow Wolf, it's very happy-go-lucky, especially with the harmonica at the beginning. It's very lighthearted and I always feel like listening to. And like most songs from the series, it's not only two minutes long. Overall, if you're somewhat unfortunate to own a Vita, at least give this game a go. You definitely enjoy it. Oh, and before I forget, here is Johnny and Bosch! Number 18. Cliff Cliffy B. Blazinski is one amazing guy, and when you put him and I together, you get one blurry picture of ourselves! Yeah! But he did come up with some amazing games in his time, like Gears of War and Unreal. And while I have an affinity to both of them, my personal pick is definitely one of the first games he worked on, Jazz Jackrabbit 2. It may only be a 30 second opening, but it has a lot of personality and charm put into it. You can tell the staff of then Epic Mega Games were fans of cartoons, as you can tell by the expressive expressions of the character. It feels like a cartoon with all the funny shticks, like the white flag when someone is about to be shot or fall. The only problem is that Spaz, Jazz's right hand jackrabbit, barely does anything cool in this opening. I would have to say that this is my slipper hit on this list, and if you haven't played this game, I implore you to check it out. Number 17 When it comes to long-running fighting game franchises, one of the ones that stood the test of time is King of Fighters. Or Koff, if you abbreviate it. By the way, did you know that Koff actually stands for monkey in Hebrew? Now you know! 
That series impressed me more than Street Fighter over the years, and especially in the intro department, but don't get me wrong, Street Fighter has some cool intros, and I'm one of the few people who's probably gonna defend Indestructible. I actually missed that song in Super Street Fighter 4. But the opening to Cough 99 is nothing short of jaw dropping, especially how old it is. The moment you turn on Monkey 99, you're treated to some awesome guitar opening, led into a cool battle between two characters that really hits up your adrenaline. And I also have to give major props to the animators for managing to cram in every single character in the game and giving them all equal screen time for the most part. It's really impressive considering how huge the roster is! I don't even know half of those people, but I think it's really admirable. Also, this intro gets extra points for having My Shiranui. My Shiranui is so popular that there is even an American version of My Shiranui. And I like me some My Shiranui. Oh yeah. The best part of this intro is the extremely well animated fight between the two poster boys of the franchise, Kyo and Yori. And I can watch this over and over. It's a surprisingly very epic and well choreographed fight. And sure, the four CG 3D effect looked kinda out of place, but the 2D animation more than makes up for it. And you know what? With a cool intro like this, there is no surprise that it has King in its name. Number 16! There is no denying that I'm gonna put Tekken somewhere on the list, as you probably all know by this point. I love me some Tekken. And Tekken definitely has some amazing intros, I mean, just look at Tekken 3 here, it's definitely stunning, especially for how old it is. But despite how great that intro is, I decided to go with Tekken 5. But first of all, let me give you a very serious recap of what happened in Tekken 4. Hey son, did you do the dishes? No dad, I told you, ask Jin to do it this week. But dad, I told you I'm busy, I can't do it, besides it was grandpa's turn to do it. My turn? I own a freaking multi-million dollar company, I don't need to wash any freaking dishes, you do it! If you bring that stupid company one more time, I swear to god I'm gonna throw you into a volcano. Again. That's it. I hate you. I hate you too. I hate you as well. <laughs> that's it, I'm leaving, bye. Yeah. And that's pretty much how Tekken 5 begins. Hayachi and Kazuya are flying in the dojo when they're attacked by a bunch of jacks. And instead of quarreling like, well, usual, they decide to actually work together, and the result is actually pretty fun. This fight scene is really awesome, and I especially like despite how much crap there is going on on the screen, you can still follow all the action, and it's really well choreographed fight. Also, it has Raven. And Raven's a freaking ninja. Need I say more? The second half is even better. Honestly, I just love the track here. It's called Sparking, and I swear to god, that's not a Dragon Ball Z reference this time. It has amazing build-up and a rocking bridge that really makes it a bona fide classic for me. Also, the visuals, the editing, the speed, it's just a pure eye candy. So many people even forget the fact that Asuka literally jumps from a building on a bike to save a cat that was, you know, stuck on a roof and then just landing on the ground completely unscathed. Nah. This comes from a series that has farting dinosaurs. The fact that this opening is comprised from two different halves and both of them are really good is the reason why this opening is on the list. You can say this opening has a spark. <laughs> Kill me. Number 15. This is gonna be very, very interesting. Do I really need to talk about it's tricky by this point? I mean, this song is graved into people's mind by now. It's awesome, and I actually prefer the edit here more than the original Run DMC version for how fast paced it is. Also, when I first bought it and I saw some of the tricks that you can do, you can be safe to assume that my mind was blown. You have to realize how tame the original SSX was, and then this happens. Like, you can do like a break dance and then be a propeller and stuff, and you can do that in that game. The game literally points at you and say, hey, you, yeah, you, you can do this. And I was so stoked. 
The sequels may be considered better technically, but this intro is one of the many reasons why Tricky is my favorite of the franchise. Fourteen! Oh wow, this actually looks pretty cool. The quiet build-up, the desert, the menacing aircraft. What kind of a badass game can this be? Mario? Mario? You mean da 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 Mario? Yeah, this is Mario Strikers Charged. Why Charged? Well, this. What is this game right again? E yeah, well, more like E for like execution. Seriously, this intro sets the entire tone for the whole game. This isn't your grandpa's Mario. This is one hardcore game. Heck, it has guitar riffs. Guitar riffs in a Mario game. What? It's like putting heavy metal in a Chinese warlord game. Oh wait, they only did that. So yeah, it doesn't really feel like any traditional Mario game with all the skydiving and the bombing and the attacks. But it does have some really cool special attacks, even though Peach can still not beat Zelda screw attacks. So it may be a bit of a gimmick to put this on the list just because of the shock value. But still, I really enjoy watching this opening over and over again because how different it is, and it's definitely worth this place in the list. But hey, at least it taught us about the method of execution in the Mushroom Kingdom now. Thank you, Mario Strikers Charge. Thank you so much. Number 13! Rock Band 1 was pretty insane. Having a band play on a friggin' van and literally defy the laws of physics as, you know, if you turn the car around, they're most likely gonna fly off it, is epic enough to make it on this list. The sequel takes it up a notch. So a rival band shows up, and its link singer has a mic connected to a medieval flail. I'm pretty sure this guy has superpowers because he would have been swung like a red gull and getting smacked around if it was realistic. Heck, he then pulls off a rather Nathan Drake maneuver and has to hang on two rival door cars at the same time. It seems that when Harmonix made this opening, they watched a lot of Mad Max. And that's pretty awesome. Honestly, I prefer the first song in the first Rock Band Highway Star more, but in my opinion, the second opening overall is better. Because the scenario is much crazier. And by God's sakes, if you can tell by my enthusiasm, this intro is badass. I wonder how the sequel looks like. Uh, yeah, no. Number 12! I know those are Mario games, but they're both two different sub-franchises. They're a sports game, yeah, but they both have two separate games, so I'm gonna include Mario Power Tennis. After losing in the tennis tournament to Mario and Luigi, both Wario and Waluigi decide to resort to vandalism, which results in them being chased by cops. <laughs> After the chase sequence inspired by Benny Hill, they end up in Bowser's secret training hall and he decides to help them out to become better tennis players. And out of all the intros I've seen so far, this made me laugh the most. The quick editing, the comedic timing and the voice acting really seal the deal. Especially how Charles Martinet finally got lines to work with. What's this dumb? Also, I really love the ending for how epic it is yet ridiculous at the same time. Wario and Waluigi decide to do a rematch with their counterparts, but instead of making it a tennis match, they use a bomb shooting machine. Okay, this raises one question. Can I just ask what's the point of training those two in tennis if they're not gonna even use tennis to defeat them? What's the point of using the bomb shooting machine? You've been torturing them all this time! Then might as well just give them the machine to begin with without just torturing them for fun! Also, this doesn't stop here. Mario, Luigi, and other characters decide to deflect those bombs by using their rackets, but Bowser sees that it doesn't work, so in his plan of action? Well, he decides to throw more bombs at them. And Princess Peach is kidnapped by him all this time? Uh, why again? The reason why this is really that big of a deal is because it's played for laughs and not meant to be serious. And you can tell that Camelot had a lot of fun making this intro. And that's why it's on the list, because I had a lot of fun watching it every time. Number 13. 
Number 11. Sometimes I wonder how a series can be as successful as it should be. Onimusha is a great example to that. True, the first couple games had those infamously bad tank controls, but it had enough style to hold itself very own, even though Devil May Cry kinda pushed it away. One great move that Capcom did with the third game is getting rid of those old controls. The second was the intro. It seems that Capcom put a lot of money into this opening, considering how technically impressive it is. It seems that it was made by a robot! Oh, it is made by a robot. Heh. <laughs> Still, the sheer scope of this opening is just out of this world. The insectoid army here reminds me a lot of Lord of the Rings, and there is even this flying enemy that devours one of the falling bad guys on Q. What a trooper. While the scale in the opening is definitely impressive, it's nothing compared to how our main hero, Samanosuke, kicks ass. I don't really need to explain why, just watch some of those scenes. you want to play the game, does it? The only reason why this opening nearly missed the top 10 is because the fight with the main guy isn't really as impressive. To me, it really looks out of place, and that's considering all the different creatures we've seen in this opening. Also, Sabanosuke turns into the human version of Kimari from Final Fantasy X. Heh. <laughs> Still, Capcom did a really good job of getting my attention, and even if I don't want to play as Sabanosuke, I can always play as the French guy from The Professional, and his character name? Jacques. Now I totally wanna play this game. Hey guys, if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. That'll be really cool. And while you're waiting for part two that's gonna be over there, you can watch my review of Cameo right there, or also my buddy Dex, he did a review of Sonic and the Second Rings, which I am in, and a bunch of other cool YouTube people, so check that out. In the meantime, I'm gonna work on part two, so, uh, see you then. Blah.